Pleasant day to everyone. This is Jason Santos and for today I'm going to start the discussion and uncover the subject of economic statistics. So let's all get started. Now I would like to um, open this discussion with a quote from one of uh, my favorite uh, personalities in the field of business. Uh, which is uh, Edwards Deming. Uh, he's a pioneer when uh, he's a pioneer in the field of uh, total quality management. You know, um, and according to him, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. So this is very true for the subject of um, economics and uh, statistics in general for both of the disciplines. Because um, nowadays, it's easier for people to uh, just throw their opinions around or share their opinions. But without data backing up such statement, then it is just a mere opinion. So here, in our discussion, we will try to understand the importance of statistics in the field of economics. I am sure majority of you are already familiar in the concept or science of statistics. So when we talk of statistics, it pertains to the collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. And then it's being applied to several fields like science, industrial, social problems, and more. So I'm sure most of you who are already in their college years are very much familiar with getting data. As what you can see, um, statistics extends to a lot of disciplines or a lot of branches. And it, these are not restricted to the four that you are seeing right now. In fact, these are just examples of areas wherein you can apply statistics. Here we can see mathematics. You can also see science. You can see information technology or even business. So on all of those fields, uh, practically almost all fields can be um, integrated with statistics. Now, as for the subject at hand, we are talking of economic statistics. So what do we mean when we say economic statistics? It is the collection, processing, compilation, dissemination, and analysis of economic data. So practically the same definition with statistics. It's just that it is applied in the field of economics. And um, when you say economic statistics, it refers to the usage of economic data, such as parts of economy like the region, country, or group of countries. So economic statistics may also refer to a subtopic of official statistics for data produced by official organizations, such as national statistics services, or in our case in the Philippines, we have what we call PSA or Philippine Statistics Authority, formerly known as um, the NSO, okay, National Statistics Office. So this branch of government is in charge of getting the statistical data uh, the, the country has. Now, what is the purpose of economic statistics? Again, it provides a key input for decision making. So like what um, Edwards Deming said in his famous quote, okay, um, opinions without data are just mere opinions. In the same manner, um, if we are talking of opinions that we would like to form as an ideology, okay, it has to be back, uh, backed up by certain data. And that data will push for a specific ideology or an opinion to become an economic policy, okay? And then leaders use this information in order for them to be able to decide properly to whether to push this economic policy or not. Subject includes statistical analysis of topics and problems in microeconomics, macroeconomics, business, finance, forecasting, data quality and policy evaluation. And how did the interest for economic statistics all started 
Let's go back to 1973, after World War II, wherein the first oil crisis happened. This oil crisis happened during the Yom Kippur War, also called as the Ramadan War or the October War. It happened in the time of 1973 from October 6 to 25. And uh, it has involved the uh, Arab coalition against Israelis. So this is an Arab versus Israeli war. The Arab coalition consists of Venezuela, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Kuwait. All of those um, countries against Israeli and its uh, allies, such as U.S. And because of the war, because of their conflict, um, one of the strategies thought of by the Arab coalition is to put an oil embargo and a trade prohibition to Western countries. So what does that mean? Okay, The Arab countries have decided that they will put in a higher price for oil in goals or in their um, desire to um, halt the operations or the supply of oil to Western countries. So technically, they are trying to sabotage the economy of Western countries and um, making a point or trying to prove a, a point to these countries that you cannot um, um, you cannot operate or continue operations or you are relying to our supplies. And this event has strongly influenced how statistical information was gathered. Later on, we will understand that. So the oil shock or the 1973 oil crisis really um, made a huge impact to United States' uh, way of uh, economic approaches. Um, they have started an oil rationing program to address the deficits and public outcry hoping to reduce oil dependence from Arabs. Um, the embargo that was put upon by the Arabs have definitely halted the supply of oil in the uh, United States. And we can all just imagine uh, the impact of this. Reducing the oil uh, supply would also mean halting the um, operations of transportation, factories, in many other essentials day to day. So despite this, the American population felt very angry uh, as they felt the limiting effects in their daily consumption of oil products. So a lot of people have suffered um, loss of jobs, loss of livelihoods, lower standards of um, living, higher unemployment, so on and so forth. These were all brought upon by the higher oil price or higher petrol price. Apart from this, mass media also devoted more attention to economic information, which became part of the daily flow of information to economic agents and household included. So this was the time wherein um, news outlets were uh, starting to propagate or starting to have more um, media outlets for them to spread their news or spread information. And when you're uh, cascading information, it has to be reliable. Thus, the need for economic data produced by economic agents. And new techniques of time series analysis were developed and applied to the study of economic phenomena, uh, significantly altering approaches to forecasting, economic aggregates, and increasing the number of research centers individual scholars capable of carrying out quantitative analysis and forecasting. So all of these things, you know, um, were factors uh, in the development of the need for economic statistics. So as the need for economic statistics, reliable information um, progress, you know, we can see the development of that nowadays in the uh, era of information age. So fast forward today, digitization grew larger. The demand for statistical information grew rapidly as well. So you can attest to that even to our level, personal um, household users now have access to statistical data and 
not just merely statistical information, but information pertaining to economics, right? And all of these things can be gathered to several social media outlets, computers, um, videos, all of these things. And um, that's the effect of what we call as the information age or the age of the computer, which began in the 20th century. Uh, it is characterized by a rapid epochal shift from the traditional industry established by industrial revolution to an economy primarily based upon information technology. So again, um, just to put it back, at your level, you can easily get all of these informations using your cell phone, using your computer, and we can now venture into internet to gather all of those things. So that is a um, testament to the evolution of economic statistics. Now that we have refreshed ourselves with history, uh, a history lesson, as to the importance of economic statistics, we now go to the conclusion or the threefold importance of economic statistics. So why is economic statistics important? First, information from economic statistics is important in forming opinions and ideologies about the direction of economic policy. Okay, let me stress that. The economic policy has to take first before opinions and ideologies um, follow or uh, go towards the direction of economic policy. Wherein what happens normally is the other way around. People share their opinions and ideologies and then from that economic policy is born where it shouldn't be um, that case. Whenever an economic policy is done or made, it has to be drawn from certain data which is taken from a population. So that's the first importance. The second one is it helps economic operators to be fully informed and rational. So when we talk of economic operators, who are they? They are your officials, like your government officials, lawmakers, statesmen, all of those um, personalities. They must be doing this job with full information. You know? They must have a set of team of researchers giving them all of the economic statistics in be able to make rational decisions. And third, or final, it aims to increase knowledge that might result in a better approach to decision making. So again, at the end of the day, um, data is uh, used in order for us to be able to make the right decision. Now, experienced people like... Um, if you have lawmakers, if you have congressmen, senators, or even the highest uh, state officials, you know, they are filled with experience. Okay, we cannot um, discount that fact from them. But in order for them to make a certain decision and make it uh, a certain conclusive decision. It must be backed up by data. It must be backed up by numbers. You can't just, you know, um, say that I will be making this policy or that policy out of nowhere without any justification. Okay? So all of these things, all of these three um, in a uh, threefold importance are your basic um, justifications as for the need of economics. Up the first part of economic statistics, um, I hope you have learned something from this very short discussion. Please tune in for the next part of this discussion in my upcoming video lecture tutorials. And um, with that, thank you so much. To God be all the glory. Till my next episode.